Alright, so video editing is not that difficult, but do you know what can make it easier? Let's find out. Getting to know your video editing software is really important as it helps you get the feel of your workflow, allowing you for faster edits. But one of the most important things that you have to learn to use is your editing tools. These little things are what will allow you to make simple yet effective edits throughout your video. But sometimes we don't even know what they're for or what they're even called, especially if you're just starting out. So let me introduce you to these little guys. So starting off with the first one, the selection tool. A pretty simple tool, but it is one of the tools that you will use the most when editing. This is basically your standard mouse, allowing you to select different elements such as clips and even lets you change settings, values, and much more. However, this can also be a basic trimming tool that you can use by going to the ends of your clips and dragging it to trim it. So like I said, it's pretty simple, but very important. The next tool on our list is the hand or drag tool. This will allow you to navigate forward and backwards on the timeline just by clicking and dragging wherever you want to go. So it's pretty simple. You can just move about on the timeline by using the hand or drag tool. Up next is the razor or cut tool, also known as the split tool, and it's pretty straightforward. It allows you to cut your footage anywhere you have selected in the timeline. And all you have to do is just click and it will cut the clip wherever you have decided to click it on. Now take note that this will not delete your footage. It's just basically going to cut it or split it at a certain point in your video clip. And then after that, you can choose what you want to keep and what you want to delete. Moving on to the ripple tool. So the ripple edit is a trim tool and it's used to trim a clip. However, once it is trimmed, this causes a ripple effect throughout the rest of your timeline, which means that it shifts or slides all the following clips into a new position in your timeline. So if you trim a clip using the ripple tool, it will basically move the rest of your clips surrounding it into a new position so that there's no gaps whatsoever. The rolling tool. Now the rolling edit is another trim tool used for fine tuning and adjustments. And you perform a rolling edit by moving an edit point either forward or backward in the sequence. This will update the in and out points or the start and end points without moving the clips. It will just shorten one clip while lengthening the other. So this will allow you to retain the length of your selected video clip while moving the edit point. And you can adjust where you want the first clip to end or the second clip to begin all by using the rolling edit tool, which will not change the overall length with your sequence. So the right stretch tool, and this is one that I use often, and this tool allows you to change the speed of your video clip that you have selected. And all you have to do is just select the end point of your video clip and drag it either to make it longer or shorten the clip. Now this will either increase or decrease the speed of your video depending on which direction you have dragged it and set it on. So this is a nice and easy way to change the speed of your footage just in case if you have to fill any gaps. Next up is the slide tool. Now the slide tool works by preserving the in and out points or the start and end points of your selected clip and it changes the in and out points of the surrounding clips. So when you're moving your video clip using the slide tool on the timeline, it preserves your video clip the same, but it's just changing the surrounding clips around it. And this also allows it to close any gaps as well. And now we have the slip tool. Now the slip tool is the opposite of the slide tool, but the slip tool allows you to slip or move your video clip while keeping the in and out points the same. So you can move your video clip that you have selected and slip it underneath the surrounding video clips without changing the in and out points. And this is just an example of how it would look like if I wasn't using the slip tool. So as you can see, it's the same concept, but saves me much more time by using the slip tool. And the final tool that I want to talk about is the track select tool. Now this tool will let you select all the video clips in your sequence or in the timeline and you can move it either forward or backwards. And in some video editing programs you might have to hold or right click so you can choose what direction you want to move it on. However, it won't select clips that are in locked tracks. So if you want to move the whole timeline, make sure your tracks are all unlocked. In some occasions you can hold shift and the tool will only select one track instead of all the tracks and sometimes it's quite the opposite. So you just have to explore what your editing software will allow you to do with this track select tool. But it's really handy when you're trying to move things about in the timeline. Now these were just some of the basic video editing tools that I want to share with you so you can get a better understanding of what they are and how you can use them. Now I know that different video editing softwares have a variation of these tools that may go by a different name, but generally they're very common in almost every editing software that I have tried. Now there are so many tools that you guys can use to increase efficiency when video editing. One tip that I can give you is using keyboard shortcuts to change each tool. Instead of going back and selecting it, you can use the keyboard shortcut that goes 
goes along with those tools so you can increase the speed of your edit as well. So now that you have a general knowledge of what these tools are and what they do, hopefully it can help you improve your editing skills when you're editing your next video. But that's pretty much it for today. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.